the first, I suppose, really major, didn't see that coming wow, was the realization that general relativity and quantum mechanics are sort of the same theory, but played out in different kinds of space. But that was just, I had no idea that was coming. Stephen Bullfan, thank you so much for joining me on The Last Theory. My pleasure. There's so much I want to cover, so I've got a whole bunch of low-level questions about space, time, matter, that kind of thing, some high-level questions about observers, about consciousness, about the Rouliad. And I'd like to, if we can, get onto the meta level about you know, knowledge, creativity, and how you think, because you're obviously quite an extraordinary thinker. So let's start at the really high level. I find your new approach to physics extremely compelling, so much so that I started the last theory to talk about it. I was wondering what you find the most compelling aspect of your framework. Like, what made you think, wait a minute, there's, there's something here? Yeah, I mean, uh, this, is, this has been a long story uh, of kind of, you know, I started off doing traditional particle physics type things when I was a kid. I started thinking about kind of how simple programs, what simple programs can do sort of a, a new foundation for theory and science. That's what I spent much of the 80s and the 90s working on. I kind of wondered at that time, could it be the case that the things that I'm finding with simple programs could explain the physical universe? At the beginning, I didn't think so. I didn't see how that would work. I, I knew too much about existing physics, and it didn't seem to fit. And then I had this kind of idea of, well, we have to, we have to roll back some of the assumptions we've had, in particular assumptions that we've had about space and time, and that led me to start thinking about kind of networks as the foundations for space and so on, and start thinking about time as this kind of computational process. So by some time in the 90s, I'd kind of figured out a few very suggestive and interesting things, like that it seemed like general relativity could arise from kind of the collective effects of these network rewriting processes and so on. But then after I finished my book, New Kind of Science, that whose real thrust was how do we use programs rather than equations as foundations for making models of things? After that, I kind of sort of thought I would try and work on fundamental physics in the same direction, but I didn't quite see where to go. And, you know, at the time, my friends, the physicists, were like, we don't need another theory. So <laughs> I kind of put it aside for a while. And then, well, a, a number of, of uh, actually a number of young people sort of were encouraging me, you really should work on this. And 2018, I made kind of a, a technical, a uh, little technical uh, advance in thinking about hypergraphs as kind of the foundation for what should be rewritten, so to speak, and the sort of underlying uh, structure underneath space and so on. And then, then uh, well, we can talk about more of the details of this, but uh, a couple of young physicists, Max Piskanoff and Jonathan Gorard, were, came to our summer school and were like, you've got to work on this stuff. It's too important to just sort of put us aside. And so in, in uh, late 2019, started working on this. And, uh, you know, it was sort of amazing to me because a lot of things that I had thought is going to be 100 years before we understand how this works. It's like, wow, it really, you know, this is how it works. It, it's, there, it's one of these things where when you have a theory and you, you kind of know what it has to hit, you know the things yeah. that it has to sort of agree with, and you keep on seeing, well, it's kind of obvious that it, that it follows, that it does this or that or the other. And all these things that kind of have been, oh, I don't know, whether it's things about sort of the way that relativistic transformations of space and time versus energy and momentum, why are they the same? Well, it's obvious why they're the same. So just a whole series of things where, where it seemed like this was a thing that I'd, I'd, I'd known about for a long time. I'd always found somewhat mysterious. And suddenly it just starts to fit together. So that was, that was sort of the first big thing was this kind of low-level computational infrastructure based on hypergraph rewriting that a lot of things that I'd kind of wondered about for a long time, known about in physics for a long time, just started fitting together. That was the, the first big, big thing. Then I think the thing that's emerged since kind of the, the first push on the physics project is more of an almost philosophical understanding of what's going on. What, why does something like this work? And this idea of sort of this, this interplay between our nature as observers and the sort of fundamental computational character of the Rouliad and computational irreducibility and so on. And so for me, 
the real kind of like, this is really the, the first, I suppose, really major, didn't see that coming wow, was the realization that general relativity and quantum mechanics are sort of the same theory, but played out in different kinds of space. That was yeah. just, I had no idea that was coming. Um, yeah. And uh, I think, and then beyond that, kind of this, this very general way of, of seeing how could you make a theory? You know, how could it be the case that we can, we can make a, 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 a fundamental theory and not be confused about why is it this theory rather than another theory and so on? And, and so sort of the, the, the Rouliad and the kind of philosophical implications of that have been kind of a, a recent driver. And then the realization that the sort of formalism that we've kind of developed from physics is, is uh, that that kind of can, can be applied to all these other areas is, is to me really an amazing thing. And it's really, you know, to me, it's kind of the, this, this moment where we get to have a new paradigm for thinking about science. And I, I kind of feel a certain sense of responsibility at this point, because it feels like, you know, 100 years ago, there was a lot of advance in physics and in, in mathematics and the foundations of mathematics, uh, a little bit earlier than that in things like biology. And it's it all had some kind of paradigmatic structure. I think we now have sort of another level of paradigmatic structure. And it's sort of a responsibility uh, a century later to go and figure out, you know, what can we do with this new paradigmatic structure? Yeah. And I kind of also feel there's a sort of strange sense that there's kind of a, a tower of things that had to happen for us to get to the point of having this kind of model and theory and so on. And, you know, if any one of those hadn't happened, if it hadn't been for the technology that I've developed and, you know, the experience that I had in physics and things like this, then we wouldn't have got here. And it feels very kind of, uh, uh, it, 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 it's a strange feeling that it's sort of this, this set of coincidences has happened and now there's sort of a responsibility to work out their consequences. It sounds like rather than one single domino falling that made you think, okay, this is it. It's a whole series of dominoes. There's general relativity. There's the equivalence of general relativity and, and quantum mechanics in your model and the Rouliad and a whole series of philosophical things beyond that. Right. I mean, I think the thing that has been remarkable to me is, you know, at the beginning, it was kind of like, well, I don't know if this is going to work. And, you know, we're going to find, oh, there's this thing that just doesn't fit. And we'll have to say, you know, it's, we're not, we're not, you know, it's not, not going to, not going to work out. But after a while, so much stuff fits together yeah. that I, I can't imagine, you know, this, this is the story, so to speak. I mean, it's, it's, yeah. uh, there's, I think, you know, for me personally, it's sort of an interesting thing because I've been doing lots of stuff in my life in science and technology and so on. This is kind of a, a bonus episode, so to speak, because, you know, I wasn't expecting this to work. I was expecting that maybe we could get the beginnings of it to work and it will be a 50, 100 year story to get sort of beyond thinking about the first 10 to the minus 100 seconds of the universe or something. So it's, it's in a sense, it's a very, one of the things that's really interesting for me, sort of in a sense, psychologically about the whole thing is this didn't need to happen, so to speak. This is something, it's a bonus. So that allows one to have much more of an attitude of, you know, let's see where the chips fall. If the, you know, and then it's like, wow, the chips are falling in a way that things are really fitting together. And that's, you know, that's, it's a very, it's a very exciting thing. <laughs>